All right, in this episode of Bare Knuckle Bowker, very excited to be chatting with an individual who competes at BKFC 67, which goes down on October 25th. And at the time we're talking, we are officially one week out and should be a great fight with Jordan Christensen taking on my guest today, Andrew Yates. And just, yeah, looking forward to chatting a bit with him today on Bare Knuckle Bowker. How are you doing, man? Looks like you're getting in some good work there and whatnot and getting in the sauna now. Yeah, we just got done doing a workout, so now we're just getting some recovery and in the sauna, and um, we're we're pretty much on weight, you know, we're just chilling, so just waiting now for a week to come. Yeah, and it's interesting. I mean, I feel like the classic thing a lot of people always bring up with Denver is that, you know, sort of higher altitude. Is it a thing that you allocate a lot of thought to or, like, prepare in a slightly different way, or is it kind of just like as long as you come in and you're general kind of like state of conditioning it should be kind of like inconsequential yeah, like you should no, be good I to live, go i live in colorado so i'm only like four hours from denver so we're a little bit lower but we're not the lowest still we're pretty high up still so denver doesn't really affect me too much at all um i would love to fight at sea level that'd be sweet i'll have good cardio but um yeah denver doesn't affect me at all I've fought there many many times all through amateur pro so i'm good there i love it yeah, do you think that, I guess, then maybe gives you an advantage over some people coming in? Like, I guess, have you noticed instances of people who are not within the state coming in and it seems to affect them to a pronounced degree, I guess? Oh, most definitely. Uh, and before uh, drug testing and whatnot, um, you know, that's even worse because Colorado it was one of the only few states that was, you know, marijuana was legal in. Um, so, you know, a lot of fighters would come over to Colorado to fight, but, you know, then they partake before the fight or whatnot in these other activities and uh so then they got that in the system the the air quality it always kills them so uh now that marijuana is kind of legal everywhere in the united states it's not as bad as it used to be but the air quality you know being so high up it still affects a lot of people so yeah for sure and just yeah it's a very interesting sort of you know moment here in a lot of different regards like i feel like denver has i guess been such a good market for really i mean a lot of i guess bare knuckle promotions and you even kind of see the openness with some other i guess outside promotions too like i guess with one championship doing some shows yeah. in denver and they utilize like that slightly different rule set as far as like their mixed martial arts goes so that's kind of cool i mean it seems like there's that certain openness to i guess newer forms of combat for lack of a better way to say it there yeah, uh, I mean, if you go back, UFC 1 was in Denver, right? So we've always been a good uh, – Colorado's always been a combative sport. Joseph Mason, who was the head commissioner back in the day, has always been va um, really good for, for the fights and whatnot. Unfortunately, he passed, and now it's Tony Cummins. And Tony is trying to follow his footsteps as good as he can, and he's never going to be a Joseph Mason. But he's doing a great job of letting, you know, letting different kind of uh, martial arts forms come into Colorado and uh, – the commission here, it's just amazing. So, And I guess one thing I wanted to touch base with you on, because oh, I feel wow. like we would have, I guess, enough time away from it for there to be some level of, I guess, demonstrable change. But I'd seen you had a post circa close to a year ago at this point where you were talking about how for the past 10 years you've been training mostly at your own gym and really focusing on the team, but that you were going to take I guess at least a brief step down from coaching to primarily focus on the fighting. I guess that we're, you know, a year out from that or since we're a year out from that, yeah. as I had kind of said, like, have you noticed any demonstrable differences and everything uh, at this juncture? Oh, huge differences. I closed down my gym. I stopped coaching. I went over to another local gym here called uh, Grand Valley Brazilian JJJ. If you're in the Western Slope, we're the best gym for sure. Hands down. Uh, they got, it's mostly a jujitsu gym, but, I tell you, killers on killers on black belts in the gym. But they got good stand-up, too, coached by Cameron Thurgood. And I, I substitute every now and then only when they need help or whatnot. But me stepping down and actually being a student of the game again, I love it. Um, I'm learning so much. My cardio has gone up. My mental aspects has gone up because I don't have to worry about coaching these other fighters. I don't have fighters telling me, hey, I'm 10, 20 pounds out. Two days of the fight i'm like bro you're done you're not making weight you know go 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 for a um, sauna session for all day because it's gonna be hard i don't have to worry about that i gotta worry about myself and myself only and uh i love it i have great great group of training partners great coaches at uh, grand valley right now 
And um, I'm just, I feel like I'm just on another level of uh, fighting and training right now. So I feel amazing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and for sure. it's, it's kind of interesting, like kind of like touching on a few things here, but I had seen a post a bit ago that I guess illustrates the, I guess, gamesmanship to a certain extent. Like it just, it seems like you're just down to kind of fight whoever, wherever, whenever, like I had seen, I guess this was early 2018, like you had competed in a kickboxing bout and you were up several weight brackets and stuff like that. So just cool yeah, to see stuff I'm like not- that. Yeah. I mean, I'm down to fight anybody, anytime, anywhere. I don't really care. You put the money in front of me and uh, there's only three outcomes. You're going to lose, you're going to hit a draw, or you're going to win. There's only three outcomes to this sport and I've hit all three of them before, so it's nothing different to anything else. And I just love the competition, the competitive edge that I put on. So, um, yeah, I'm down to fight anyone, anytime, pretty much any weight. Just had the bag has to be right. Yeah, I feel like that sentiment could also be extended to someone like Vanderlei Silva, who you for a long time, it seems like you've had very close connections to Vanderlei as well. Like you congratulated or congratulated him rather on the Hall of Fame induction and just had a lot of great, you know, sparring yeah. with him over the years and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, he's someone that you could, you know, put in that yeah. kind of conversation Vand- too. Vanderlei, you know, I, I try to mimic myself like Vanderlei. I trained with him so long, but um. I call it the OG of Vandalay's gym, you know, the OGs of us who were over there. I mean, you had like Khalil Roundtree who just fought for the title against Alex Pereira. You know, you have myself. There's so many that came from Vandalay's gym that, um, that, like, if you go back to some of those photos of mine of when I was training at Vandalay's before he moved and retired, and you start looking at those people, you'll see Khalil, you'll see myself, you'll see Dave Mazzani, you'll just see there's so many uh, killers in that whole entire picture. And, um, you know, I think the why everyone in that photo is doing so good is because Vandalay fed that off on us that it's be killed or get killed kind of mentality. But at the end of the day, you're still waking up the next day and uh, with a little bit more money in your pocket and you had a great fun time. And so that's how I look at it. I just love to compete. So. Yeah, and I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about this. I mean, bit of a heavy topic to say the least, but just with like some of the, I guess, declaration components of that ufc antitrust lawsuit which silva is involved in like he went into pretty specific detail about just the myriad of significant injuries that he's had i guess just symptoms that are i guess in alignment with traumatic brain injury cte things of that nature like i was i guess i was just curious if you were privy to all of that and just i guess your thoughts on that yeah, no, I am. Um, uh, I know about all of that. I have a few friends like, um, you know, Diego Sanchez, who he wasn't from Vandalay's, but you know, he's has some brain issues, right? And he's a uh, he. He'll probably hate that I say that, but you know, he's he's been a killer, so he's been killing everybody. And also, when you're a killer like that, you take some damage. But I've been lucky enough that uh, my father in a uh, Vandalay's gym. We were at the right place, right time. Uh, Cleveland Brain Health, Cleveland Clinics. Um, it's a brain study in Las Vegas, and I go out every year and they uh, study my brain. I've been doing it now. This is my twelfth or thirteenth year I've done it, um, and they're like on top of it. So I'm lucky. I don't have to. Do, I'm not on that side. But for those fighters that came before me, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that um, they need some help, and um, I don't feel like a lot of promoters are willing to give them the help because. What are they going to do? They're not, they're not making the money no more. So it's, it's sad. But luckily for me, I got hooked up with the Cleveland Clinic. And um, I do that brain study every year. And uh, if they find anything, they'll let me know right away. Yeah, I guess that's maybe a lesson that you've kind of taken away. I mean, I guess martial arts and just fighting in general is always like a generational thing as far as like learning different things or applying, I guess, different, I guess, points of understanding for lack of a better way to phrase it that's cool that you do that annually it seems like you're doing your due diligence with that yeah i'm trying to at least Uh, it's not my favorite thing to do but yeah no i definitely do it and um it's for long term right so it's my long-term life that uh we gotta make sure that it'll be i'll have a brain when i'm done i'm not all mush yeah you know got to stay on top of that it seems like I guess even even kind of saying that I didn't really even think to link these things together necessarily like in the preparation, but I do feel like there's that certain component 
to bare knuckle as far as like the i guess empirical evidence we have available now it seems like it's fairly negligible as far as like traumatic brain injury or things of that nature like it's more oriented to like the aesthetic damage of the cuts or just even with the hands i guess yeah for sure um i feel like bare knuckle is actually kind of a little safe for a lot of people like oh you're crazy you're fighting bare knuckle but an elbow and a knee and a shin to the head hurts way more than um bare knuckle and our skin will get cut and um i say bare knuckles a little bit uh too safe sometimes because they you got a little cut they stop the fight the doctor even though those fighters probably still could keep going but i understand why but uh so i feel like bare knuckles safer than even mma just because that knee to the face has got to do more damage than a couple fists you know yeah for sure you would think right and then i guess even just not even so much with the brain injuries but just like the damage that comes with grappling like to the joints and stuff like that i feel like i've heard a lot of mma fighters kind of articulate that who've crossed over into bare knuckle like just easier on the body in that sense because like the grappling is subverted from it largely yeah i i completely agree i i my joints are still all messed up and I'm always sore and whatnot, but also I'm also doing jujitsu three, four times a week still. Cause I, I just <laughs> love to compete and love to train. I, I mean, if bare knuckle after, after this fight, I don't know, maybe game bread MMA, that bare knuckle MMA, maybe, uh, maybe I go for another run in an MMA. So I never stop training everything. Um, maybe I just stick with bare knuckle. I don't know what I'm doing really. I'm just going for the ride and I I'm having fun doing it. Yeah, I think it's good to have options. I mean, you could, like, as we're talking about, do all of these things. Like, I also referenced the kickboxing bout. So you've got so many different options. Just depends on what you want to do and what opportunities are out there, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's exactly it. I'm just, they, I'm a phone call away. All the promoters know to give me a call and I'm probably down as long as that money's right. Yeah, for sure. Just, yeah, love to hear that, man. Good to see opportunities for the fighters and something that I also kind of, like to see just some of the support among different fighters like i'd kind of noticed that in the wake of i guess your lone setback in bare knuckle so far like you seem to handle it in a classy way like offering the congratulations to your opponent and then in the comments i had seen chris camozzi shouted you out for having a great fight like what are your thoughts on his fight with sawyer dp for the vacant oh. bruiserweight belt on this card I mean, I'm going to go with Chris winning that fight. I love Chris. He's been super nice ever since our first fight. Um, I fought for him. I mean, I fought on the same cards that he's fought on even when I was younger and amateur. Um, I've been watching him on, you know, UFC, PFL, all those two for a while. And um, Chris is an amazing guy, super friendly, always offering whatever he can to help us. And uh, like, no, nah, I mean, at the end of the day, we are getting in a fight. But there's nothing. It's a comp It's a sporting event. I mean, you see brothers all the time playing football against each other. You know, someone has to win, someone has to lose. There's, I, I don't take it as like that he's punching me in the face as a insult. I take it as a he's trying to win and I'm trying to win. That's all it is. Yeah, I get what you mean. There's like a certain, I guess, additional gravity to it that some fighters seem to like apply to the idea of like losing a fight. Whereas I feel like if that same individual lost like a game of like pickup basketball or something like that, they'd be nonplussed about it and just move yeah. on. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people just they can't take a loss. I mean, you can't take a loss that you didn't got some deep thinking and some growing up to do. But I mean, and I, I, I've I've been that guy. I've punched holes in walls after a loss because I'm an idiot guy in fights and arguments, you know. But th at the end of the day, uh, if you win a fight, two days later, people, oh, congratulations or whatever. But that's about it. You know, give it a month later. No one's talking about it. You're still on the back burner, you know. Um, you lose a fight. It's the same thing. People, oh, it's okay. Two days later, they're giving you a give. You'll do better next time. But a month later, still same thing. You know, nobody cares. It's, it, is, it is what it is to win or lose everyone you just have to understand that you're stepping in the cage or ring you're gonna win you're gonna lose or it's gonna be a tie but there's no just because you lose you don't why quit or why give up i mean there's only one way to go and that's to keep going yeah well said man and i guess just kind of thinking about some of the things we've talked about i guess the fact that you still regularly practice jujitsu kind of got me thinking about this like are there any 
I guess, individualized, specific kind of things you do for bare knuckle. Like, I guess some fighters I've spoken to in BKFC, like some, I feel like, swear by different knuckle conditioning techniques, whereas other guys are like, ah, you know, my knuckles are plenty calcified and whatever, like hardened from, you know, all my years in other combat sports. Like, they're galvanized already. I don't need to do that, like punching the wooden Muay Thai board or gripping the rice, gripping the sand, et cetera. Like, yeah. where do you kind of fall in that regard? Um, I don't fall into any of those. I, I train like I'm getting ready for a fight, really. Like, um, literally, if they called me right now and said, hey, there's going to be takedowns in the fight, I'll be like, okay, cool. Hey, there's going to be jujitsu in the fight, too. Okay, cool. I I don't care. Uh, I do it all. I do everything all day. You know, every day I'm getting at least jitch, a little bit of stand-up a lot of stand up and a little bit of jits. I'm doing it all all the time. So, you know, there's nothing special I don't feel like. And maybe that's maybe it's a downfall for me in Bernuckle. I don't know. But what I'm doing right now works for me, works for my body. And I'm just having a great time. Like I keep saying that. It's just I'm enjoying it more now than I used to enjoy it. You I used to be like, I have to, I have to. Now I'm just kind of enjoying it all. Yeah, that's so important. And you kind of talked about that too a bit earlier, like in the context of like you used to, I guess, get like really wound up after certain losses and just you mentioning that there. Like, when did you, I guess, kind of notice these things changing? Like, was it a gradual development into that sort of maturation almost? Or was there, I guess, a defined epiphany moment that got you to that point? I'm curious about that. I, I really don't know. I just, I guess, age, growing up, getting older, becoming a dad. I don't know. It's just just what it is. There's other stuff outside of the ring that's more important than winning a, winning a fight or losing a fight. There's way more stuff. Like Josh Hubbard, my last opponent that beat me, like he just found out that he had a tumor in his brain, you know, and he's never going to fight again. Oh, God. And Yeah, luckily, he, unfortunately, he won, but luckily he won because that's cool that he came off that. But unfortunately, I was the victim of it. But, uh, you know, that's way more important than – all of his fights combined, you know? So there's a, yeah, there's a lot more important stuff outside of the ring and fighting than just fighting. Yeah. Well said, man. Sorry to hear about his health situation. I admittedly didn't yeah. know about that until you mentioned it, but yeah, I mean, life is, I don't know. It's very, very short and unpredictable in a certain sense, but you did mention, you know, being a father and how that's, really grounded you and given I guess like a multifaceted sort of idea of how life is and stuff like that I'd also kind of seen that looks like you have another baby on the way March 2025 yeah. so that's huge man congrats sweet thank you yeah yeah no I'm I'm super excited it's gonna be a boy so I'm I'm excited I have a little boy and a little girl so it'll be fun yeah it just seems like you've got a good strong unit there like I saw a bit ago you'd shouted out your significant other for getting their master's degree while working a full-time job. It seems like the the work ethic is in abundance in that household. It seems like you guys are very goal-oriented, I guess. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, My wife, Emily, is very goal-oriented, and so am I. I. I get up and wait pretty high because if I don't see a lot, I have to have a goal that I'm reaching for, and she's the same way. We have to have this goal. Oops. Uh, what happened? Oh, there you are. Sorry. So you, there's a, we have to have a goal that we're reaching for. And if we don't have that goal, um, both of us just kind of start to slack. So we always have goals and we're always reaching for both of our goals. And uh, we always make it work somehow. Yeah, for sure. I love to see that, man. I guess like one of the things that I mean, I guess you're bringing up some things that are getting me thinking about questions I wasn't even intending to ask. But since because you had mentioned yeah. you know, game bread, bare knuckle MMA, I feel like one of the things with really a lot of the bare knuckle leagues that I've noticed is I guess their openness to have fighters compete in, I guess, gloved disciplines. If some opportunity pops up, like I feel like I've seen that a few times with different fighters who maybe are with say BKFC or BYB that want to compete in mixed martial arts or, you know, yeah. club boxing or something like that, I guess, because game bred bare knuckle MMA is ultimately different. in as far as it's MMA, like, is there language in your contract that maybe might allow for similar opportunities outside you think or would there yeah. be that exclusivity thing because it is ultimately nope. bare knuckle i guess no i i'm not like these one fight deal things so i could do whatever but uh the thing is like it seems like if i accept another fight 
like I'll accept one today and bare knuckle hit me up tomorrow with a fight off. And I'm like, Oh man, I got to <laughs> turn those guys down because I am loyal to bare knuckle. Cause they uh, gave me the opportunity and, you know, they were there first. Um, they just came on the second fight a little later. And so I would have to cancel that fight. And I feel like that's my pattern right now that I keep getting, I'm getting ready to accept the fight and then bare knuckle comes and offers me a fight. And so, uh, I would like a couple fight contract, like a three fight contract in one year, like three fights, one year. That would make me super excited. But uh, yeah, I, I'm on this after this fight. It, my contract's open. I'm a free agent. I'm, I'll do whatever. I just want to fight, compete, jiu-jitsu matches. I don't care. I'm down. Yeah, and it seems like you're involved in a few areas of the fight game. Like, I don't necessarily know if you're still doing this because sometimes these bios are like, a little out of date occasionally, yeah. but I had seen on the BKFC website that you engage in fight analysis work for King of the Cage. I'd be curious to get some insights on that. Yeah, actually. So King of Cage um, is a pretty cool uh, organization. And um, I, when they need uh, help fighting uh, for fight analysis for their videos and whatnot, um, they always call and I'm always there to do the analysis, always show up. Um, I haven't done it in a few months because they know I've been training for my fight, but uh they know that they, you know, Steve Inman, they know that I'm right there. So they just always give me a call and I, it's something fun and it's something exciting to do. And it gives me a different look out on the sport itself. And uh, when I'm done fighting, um, I've already talked to Dave and um, Andy over at BKFC. Maybe, you know, maybe I'll just, I don't know if I want to ref some, you know, become a ref in combat sports or maybe, maybe, be a commentary. I don't know. I don't know what I want to do, but I want to do something. I want to set something up. So after I'm done fighting, I have something there too. Yeah, no, that's smart. I mean, you seem obviously very excited about the competitive aspects, but realizing like, Hey, there's, you know, lanes that I can be in after the fact when, you know, being a consistent competitor, isn't the same level of viability. I mean, like you can always obviously do stuff like jujitsu masters and yeah. things like that, but just, yeah, I mean, being like a referee or an analyst would give you that longevity in like some of these other leagues. Like, I mean, that's interesting that you'd be intrigued at doing that with BKFC and that there's already been some talks about that. I feel like you could do great stuff with that. Yeah, no. And I'm, I'm going to actually talk to Dave even more this time about it. Um, get it set up. I mean, I've been in combat sports since 2008. So uh, there's really nothing I haven't really seen. Um, I'm sure there's something I haven't seen, but I feel like I've seen pretty much all everything that can happen. You know, I have over 60 fights and whatnot. So I just want to make sure there's something after when I'm done that still keeps me in the loop in the combat sports and um, coaching. I've already had my taste of that. And um, coaching to me is not my favorite thing. So I feel like I'm a babysitter when I'm coaching. So uh, refereeing or being a cut man, um, commentary, anything, really, I just want to be able to have something there. And I think I can do it all. So. Yeah, that is interesting because, I mean, I guess there, I guess you're kind of satisfying like a similar analytical component with coaching but then there is the human element where like you said sometimes the interaction can kind of turn into something tantamount to you know babysitting as yeah. you kind of said i guess like the analysis kind of like still you know satisfies that like you're breaking down fights but it removes that certain human element you touched on yep exactly so yeah if i had been analysis for bkfc that'd be wonderful traveling and getting to watch all the fights i mean what better life does chris lytle and them have right now they get to go everywhere to watch fights and just commentate them let's go i want i'm in i want to try yeah for sure man i think you'd be a great fit for that but i guess kind of pivoting the analysis based focus to your opponent here i'd be curious to get your thoughts on jordan christensen and what i guess you've seen from him so far because he's coming off of a finish at BKFC fight night, which went down in July. Prior to that, he had, you know, fallen short on a prospect series card. But yeah, it looks like he's got a few bare knuckle fights for sure. Like he's been in the game for a little bit now. Like what are your thoughts on, I guess, the skill set that your opponent has showcased? Because yeah, he's been in the game for a little bit since circa yeah. October 2021. I think Jordan, I've I've kind of looked a little bit into him in the last couple of weeks. I think he's kind of um he's following the same uh same things I am really right now. I can see that he's coaching. 
Um, he's really in, he's really involved in the coaching over there at Extreme Couture now. But uh, before that, he was fighting, and then but I can see that when he's coaching, um, he's probably putting a little more into coaching than he is himself, and that's why he's having some of these little, you know, losses on his record. Um, this fight, I can see that he's kind of maybe stepped back a little bit. I, I feel like from watching, he stepped back a little bit, but I'm not 100 percent sure because I've still seen him coaching and cornering other fighters. Um, so, yeah, I think it's really exciting and. Um, I don't. I haven't watched too many of his fights because they're not really the main. You know, they're not that many out there for me to watch on him. So we'll have to. I, I'm. I'm excited for whatever he brings. But I'll. I'll put it this way. I'm glad we're not doing a gi jiu jitsu match because I think he might have the edge. But on the rest of it, I think I'm good. I think we. I got this. Yeah, and I don't know if I misconstrued what you just said necessarily, but do you almost think that he would benefit more from doing a similar thing to what you had done in as far as like maybe at least momentarily backing up from like the coaching and then maybe predominantly focusing on, you know, the role of being a fighter? Like it seemed like you were kind of touching on something yeah. there about cornering. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like if he probably stepped back from coaching and that so much that he'd probably be it's, it'll probably be a little bit better um, at that stuff, but I don't, uh, you know, I don't know his goals, his long term goals, or anything like that. So we'll have to see what uh, what he does. You know, um, if he's maybe his long term goal is to be a coach, and maybe he's just fighting just to be competitive. I don't know. So, but from my look on it, is that he might as it looks from his record, right? Because I don't know him me personally, but from his record, it looks like he went from doing super good. To winning, losing, winning, losing, winning, losing, winning, losing, um, that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's a fair point, too. Like you said, maybe his goals are slightly different than what yours are and whatnot. But, yeah, no, it's been great getting to, you know, talk to you and whatnot. I feel like you've given some great insights during our chat. And like I've been kind of saying throughout our conversation, I do also want to be mindful of your schedule and what you're getting up to. But I guess one of the things that I kind of wanted to touch on lastly, is we're sort of wrapping up, like your track record definitely speaks for itself within the BKFC, like those KO of the night and consistent fight of the night distinctions. Like, are we expecting a similar distinction in this fight here, like a KO of the night or fight of the night sort oh, of performance? Definitely. I'm not, I, I'm good with, I'm done with the fight of nights. Fight of nights means you're going <laughs> to war. I don't like going to war no more. I, I got my taste of it. I don't want to do it. I'm I'm looking for that KO of the night and um I'm hoping to get in and out as fast as possible. I'm the third fight of the last fight of uh I guess the main or the free fights or whatever they call it. I'm excited to get get in, get out, grab some popcorn, sit down, watch Marcus Edwards, watch Chris Camozzi, watch these guys, um, you know, Brandon Gritz get out there and get that win. And I'm going to be in the front row with my popcorn and my soda with a smile on my face and some cash in my pocket. So I'm excited to do that. And uh, so that's the goal in and out as fast as possible. Yeah, for sure. I feel like that could even serve as a good parting thought in, in and of itself, but I figured I'd also give you the floor in case there was maybe one final thing you wanted to mention here, Andrew. I appreciate the yeah. time. Uh, really just Tune in. It's going to be a great fight. I'm going for knockout night again. I want that. Uh, I want that extra bonus. I want that bonus. And, uh, you know, I've, I put in the time, I put in the work and I'm ready to go. So we'll see what happens. I have the best nutritionist, Andy Thompson out there. I have the best family and support team, a great gym. I went to Genesis up there, trained a little bit with Genesis in May in Denver. I'm, I, I, I have left no, no stones unturned for this fight. Um, I'm ready to go. My chin's going to be down, unlike my last fight. So uh, if, if he's watching my last fight, don't, bad, bad influence. I I don't know. That wasn't me. Obviously, a lot of people have said that. So we'll see, though. I'm going to have fun, and I'm just going in there to enjoy it and get a get a win. Yeah, I'm excited for this Jordan Christensen fight, man. And as you said, a deep card at BKFC 67. A lot to look forward to on October 25th man i'll certainly be peeping yeah. what's going on but again to reiterate thanks so much for appearing on uh, Baron thank Uncle you, man. today and yeah no for sure great getting to chat and looking forward to peeping the fight and have a good rest of your day too andrew thank you you too bro see you guys thank you yeah.